what other challenges may you? <laughs> okay, I'll take a step back. If you're just joining us and just watching this along after the session, today we are looking at recruiting and hiring employees for small businesses. We have the perfect person who is here and you will be meeting us shortly, Kevina Nyambura from Thanisi HR Solutions, brilliant person and perfect for this subject. Okay, so we're going to jump into that. But before we do that, let me let you know a little bit about a program, what we're going to be doing today. So we'll have a welcome note. We'll have an interview with our guest and you get a chance to ask questions. So put them in the chat, put them in the Q&A. We want to make sure that you get the answers that you're looking for. Okay, that's why we do this Thursday webinar. Okay, and then we'll hear from our bank. If you have any questions as well on any subject regarding uh, your relationship with the bank, a query you may have, or even a compliment. We do like compliments and things like that. So if, if you're happy with the service that you received, let us know. So it's always good to take back that good news. But then we'll have a Q&A session, and then we'll call it an end. So 11 to 12.30, short time, but fruitful for us all. Now, to get us started, I'd like to invite um, Edna Murage, who is going to give us a bit of a welcome oh, note from the oh, site. Edna, oh, over to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, I seem to be having a challenge with the video. I don't I don't think I'm visible, am I? Uh, not yet. But all we right. can hear you. I'll work on that. All right, all right. Let, let's just uh, work with my voice. Um, just welcoming all our guests and uh, appreciating you for the time that you kept aside for this session. I believe that these sessions are fruitful and add value to our operations and uh, overall management of our businesses. Uh, also, I'd like to welcome our, our guest speaker for the day, Kevin Nyambura, who's going to assist us and equip us with the tools we need when we are acquiring manpower to run our businesses. Now, without going too much into it, because we don't have much time, I'll um, close with, my, with a quote. Uh, uh, a HR quote which says that uh, by one Steve Wayne, human resource isn't a thing we do, it's the thing that runs our businesses. So that's why it's very, very important to resource uh, correctly because we entrust our businesses with, with the people that, that assist us to run them. Thank you, Sam. Over to you. Wow. Thank you, Edna. Let's appreciate Edna, please. Give us thumbs up, a clap, whatever you have, your image, emo emojis, emojis, that one. Emojis, yes, those ones. <laughs> Very good. Edna, that was short and sweet and to the point, and we appreciate that. So Edna is definitely starting us on a very high note. HR is not something we do for our businesses. It's what runs our businesses, and that's good. I think it's in line with the fact that if we say people are the most important part of our business, then definitely it's not just something that we add to the business. So I appreciate that, Edna. All right. Um, Ali is already asking, how can I get a quick loan for small business? Ali, we, very good. I'm glad that you're putting the question in already. So keep those questions coming at the end. After this uh, middle section, we will come to those questions, okay? We will come to those questions on how COP can assist you further. Okay, so Edna is from the COP side, if you are unfamiliar with this. So COP and AMI came together to put this. So of course, COP desire to present this value to you as the customers and we jumped onto the opportunity to say hey our vision is aligned and i will let you know how our vision is aligned so if you think ami it's african management institute we're all about enabling ambitious businesses across africa to thrive how do we do that we love to use the digital platforms because they give us wider reach okay so we've managed to reach uh we have reached in 39 countries across africa super excited about that 42,000 people trained and the number is increasing. We're super excited about that as well. And we also maximize the digital platforms in terms of the practical business tools. We offer online courses and content in so many languages. So we're excited about that. And, and we're, this is one of those areas where we get to interface with, with the people who are doing the work and changing this economy. And we want to make sure that you have the help that you need. Okay, speaking of help, if you're interested in a program that can help your business to grow to the next level, your business is in Kenya, there's a virtual training program just like this. So you don't have to leave your business to study, to improve, to get practical tools that you need to grow your business. So if you're interested in such a thing, there's a link on the in the chat, I believe. Let me just double check. There should be a link in the chat shortly. Just click on it. 
and and explore. Yes, thank you so much, Fiona. Explore how this can be of value to you. But we handle um, in this program. We handle the elements such as operations, strategy, planning, and talent as well, amongst others. In school, of course, money. So if you're looking at a program that could possibly help you with that, and also there's full scholarships available. So jump in. Uh, you're more than welcome. Okay. Very good. So before we jump into our uh, our conversation with our guest today, you'll notice today we're trying to move things along so that we jump into this conversation and there's a lot of value to be given. I want to start with asking you a quick question and it's going to be the one on the screen. Okay. So we're getting into a conversation about recruitment and hiring and talent and all these things. Please share. By the time you're here, you've probably worked with uh, hiring situations or talent or things like that. Tell me in the chat, what is the worst hiring mistake? Okay, what is the worst hiring mistake you have ever made? A mistake, something that you regret where you're like, ah, when it comes to either recruiting or some element of talent, this is something that is regrettable. Nyaroche. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to read them out yet. I'm just going to wait for you guys to type in. This is very interesting. Um, Edna, uh, please feel free to drop off a video since it's not showing. Let me see. Uh, okay, keep that coming. I see there are some quick answers already. Thank you, Tobias, Timothy. What's the worst hiring mistake you've ever made? And of course, when our speaker comes, I'm going to ask her the same question. What's the worst hiring mistake she's ever made? Let's see. Let me get a few. I'm going to wait a few more seconds to get your responses. Uh-huh. OK. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to rush this part, so I'm really keen to see what's happening here. Worst mistake ever. I know by the time you're here, you've probably been in business for quite a while, okay? Either a few years or quite a number of years, but either way we've dealt with some sort of hiring situation. Um, okay, let me start reading a few responses. Interestingly, uh, and I'm, I guess I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask our speaker about this. The first like four answers were about hiring a friend or a relative. This big mistake, biggest mistake, Hiring a friend, relatives, hiring family members. Terry, I, I love this one, considering a cheaper hire. Terry, are you, um, if I may, Terry, are you in position to give us a quick comment on this? Or tell us a little bit about how this one was a, the worst mistake. Terry Sani, please unmute your mic and share with us a little bit. Terry? Yes, hey, go hello ahead. Everyone. Hey, Terry. Yeah, um, yeah, at some point, uh, uh, you have options between uh, you have good candidates and you have like two or three, and you're wondering who you should take. Then, uh, because of uh, wanting to save costs, you go for the cheaper one in the name of saving costs, yet uh, uh, you end up regretting because at the end of the day, you find that uh, there was a compromise somewhere. You left a better candidate. And so you have to go back to the recruitment table again. Yeah. What 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 was the worst that happened when you had this lesser of the two? Uh, there were integrity issues that arose, ah. and so we had to let uh, the staff go and uh, had to start hiring the process, start the process again. Oh my word! And how long does it typically take to 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 go through that process of hiring and you know trying to attract the right talent and interviews and all that? Typically, how long does it take for you? Uh, for this particular post, because it was an IT uh, specialized course at a database, uh, for database, it takes quite some time because it's a specialized area. So yeah. it, uh, it it has taken for us about uh, three to four months, and that is the shortest. It has wow. taken longer before. Yeah, so you can work wow. three to four months here, yeah. yeah. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Terry, for sharing. Uh, definitely appreciate you sharing your experience, Terry. Let me see. Um, George as well, hiring friends and anyone, friends or relatives, recommend. Ah, okay. There's a pattern here. Christine says pressure hiring, hiring parents. 
Okay. Oh, okay. Hiring parents ask you to employ a, sh a shop front car. Hiring a friend, guys. This is the. This is like the number one thing that everyone is regretting: hiring a friend or relative. I, mean, I thought there were different answers, but everyone is saying the same thing here. Um, Catherine says not calling for interviews. Lillian, where? Let me see. Um, hiring relatives, relying too much on the interviews. Okay, now I'll, I'd like to hear from one more person and then we'll get into our conversation with our guest. Lamek, if you don't mind. Lamek Ombasa, you say relying too much on the interviews. That's an interesting one because in the, in the conversation, we are going to ask about how interviews work, but you're saying there's a question to be taken there. So please tell us about that. Unmute your mic, please, and share briefly. Lamek? Lamek, going once. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to have to, to move on swiftly. But let me see. So hiring someone who was unsure of their goals, they ended up having too little commitment in their work. Hiring unqualified people. Wow. Okay. And then John, lastly, in capital letters, says friends. So anything to do with friends clearly is not, is not happening here. Okay. So... It's my great, great, great honor to introduce to you our guest. Now, there's uh, quite a number of accolades that go with our guest. She's called Kevina Nyambura. She's the CEO of Fanisi HR Solutions, and you're going to be interacting with her shortly. Um, so she's uh, she's specialized especially in uh, in uh, in the training, in recruitment, and selection. So, which is quite interesting because all our queries are around that. Um, our 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 guest is also an author, okay? She's also an author, and I will be telling you what uh, her book was about. Oh, I can tell you now: managing and developing people. So she's very passionate about people, and she one of her dreams is she would like to see Kenyan and other East African employers create workplaces that motivate employees to be and give their best. Okay, she's passionate about people. She's passionate about SMEs and is always working towards facilitating how they can be better. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, please help me welcome Kevina Nyambura. Kevina, welcome. There you are. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I'm glad to be so, here. So everyone is, uh, please welcome our guests. All the applause should be going up. Our guests should be feeling welcome. And if our mics were not off, I would be asking everyone to do the, the, the Kenyan ululation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good morning, Kevina. How are you doing? Good morning, Sam. I'm very well this morning. Okay. okay. Very good. Okay. So, Kevina, um, I was curious to ask you, when you typically introduce yourself in such forums, and I know you've done quite a number of these forums online and, and through COVID. I've been looking at your LinkedIn and you're keen to provide insights and, and, and give tools to people, things to think about, what practices. I was also seeing you're helping guide SMEs on what how, how the NSSF rules are affecting them, all these different things that are happening. What motivates you? Uh, okay, thank you, Sam. I went to school and studied education to be yeah, so planning to be a teacher. And then I keep telling people when I entered my master's, I discovered HR in a marketing class when they were discussing the four P's of marketing. Uh, that is price, yeah. product, Products, uh, place, and place. people. So for people, yeah. they brought the HR lecturer and I call it a eureka moment. So I would want to stand and say, how come no one ever introduced this topic to me? Yeah, so I really yeah. resonated with that and uh, all along my career. Uh, enjoyed working with people. I, I think naturally love people. I'm very empathetic and more compassionate. So then that blends very well with what I do. And I'm also an entrepreneur. Loves, I love business. So just seeing how people blend to businesses and how to work with entrepreneurs to post, maybe all entrepreneurs are in it to make money or make well, create well. So how to help entrepreneurs create wealth through people, create wealth through people. Yeah, because you can't do it on your own, or you can only do so much on your own. Yes. Speaking of, you can't do so much on your own. I do notice Fanisi has made, is it 13 years already or more? I, I was 
I was checking and thinking, oh, wow, it's been such a journey, right? Yes, Last year you celebrated 20, how many? Since 2010, Sorry? so this is the 13th year. 13. Or 14, so 13, yeah. 13 coming to 14 years. A round of applause. Mm-hmm. It takes, it's no light fit. Because SMEs, we do know that the statistics are not very favorable. Many don't go past their first year, second year, but you're here and you've been running this for the last 13 years. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, as you notice, we have the right person in the room. So she's she's been working and she's thriving and 13, 14 years, surely she knows what she's talking about. But I want you to take, before we jump into the direct questions on recruiting and things like that, I know that you you work with Sandbox. What's yes, your relationship with Sandbox? I know that's I think Kilimani. That's also where the offices are for uh, Venisi. Tell us what's the relationship. Tell us a bit. Okay, thank you, Sam. Again, so the Sandbox is a hub where we have thirty three different experts under one roof, and these are experts who an entrepreneur would need at any point in their uh, business all the way from strategy to HR, to marketing, PR, we have customer service, we have someone for team building, someone who's an expert in leadership, an expert in risk, in finance, tax, audit. We have 33 different uh, uh, experts under one roof. So we work independently running our own businesses, but together supporting businesses together so that uh, well, I'll be sitting, like yesterday, I was sitting at the office and then the legal expert was talking to their client who needed HR. So she came in and, and asked me to join them in the meeting and we had a HR discussion. And then he also discovered or found out he wanted process. So we called the process expert to come to the meeting and we called the <laughs> accounting expert, the finance expert to the meeting. So this is one entrepreneur who's now working with four of us, and they didn't need to move from one office to the other. We were all seated under one roof. And we're all experts who've been vetted. We run legit businesses, we pay our taxes, and uh, there's a lot of accountability. That's amazing. I'm, uh, at the beginning of the year, we had uh, Jora Mwinamo, uh, brilliant, I think he's CEO as well. And it's amazing the work that you guys are doing. And I think the last time he was interacting with us, he told us, I think this concept is going to be franchised, franchised or, or branched out to the people who are asking about it and thinking to buy and so many wonderful things happening. So it's good to interact with another member of the of the, of the the Sandbox family. Yes, okay. Jeremy, I'll see you at the yes. Sandbox. Yeah. Good. Okay, so, so that's Sandbox, but I also want to lean into this. So... Five years ago, you decided to write a book and you decided to write on managing and developing people. Of course, I have to ask you, where can we find this book? I know you may not have enough prints. People bought all of them. Is there something online? Are you going to print? Please tell us before we jump into this conversation. Oh, yeah. So I think that was 20, 2017 when I sat down and wrote this and it launched in 2018. Um, I had I had them in textbook center, but though I've not done uh, a new reprint, so yeah. um, I think at the end of this, my details will be shared, so you can get them directly through me. Okay. okay. And, and it's now, a book what... for entrepreneurs, as I said, for small businesses, just written from the experience that I've had for the uh, for the period of time that I've worked with SMEs in HR. Yeah. Just give, give me a bit of a, of a, a scoop on what, because there are many books on people, there are many books on managing and developing people. What unique perspective did you want to bring to this particular subject? Uh, okay, for me, the subject that uh, resonated with me and that I had to do some research on was uh, the topic of uh, legal, the legal requirements around employees, which we are not aware of, and mostly termination. Because you find someone who's stolen and you get very angry and you tell them to leave immediately. And then they go and sue. And the judge in front of you will not disagree on the reason. It's a valid reason. If someone steals from you, you send them away. But you did not follow process. So there's a procedure that you need to follow before you send people away. You terminate their contracts. So they would uh, penalize you and probably award them a whole year's worth of salaries. And this someone was stolen from you, and no one argues that it was a, a good reason to fire them, but it was not, they don't follow process. So that's one uh, topic that we delve in and we pick cases and say, look at this case. This was a clean and clear cut reason to fire someone, 
but then you didn't follow procedure. So you need to know what procedure to follow. Just one more question about this book. What um, you wrote this five years ago with more experiences. What what else have you learned that you may want to add a chapter in? <laughs> Actually, that's the reason I've not done a reprint. I keep thinking there's so much, so much more, so many new things that have happened. COVID was a whole experience by itself, and you yeah. know the trees moved completely. Uh, and yep, now yep. we're facing like the future of work. So if I was, I'm very busy, but if I just I'm able to find time and make time and, and uh, update it to today's reality. Okay, okay, very good. But I know that the principles are the same and they apply. And when we access this book, it will definitely give us the value that right. we would like to get as SMEs, especially in the in the local space as Kenya, right? Right. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, it adds a lot of value and it's very pragmatic. Okay, it's, so... Um, it resonates with the, with the entrepreneur. So you really know, like, yeah, yes, yes, yes. This is what I'm struggling with right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's jump into today's conversation. So if you're watching, if you're listening, um, this is, uh, we have Kevina Nyambura, and she's going to be helping us with the subject of recruiting. So um, oh, Tim Timothy is asking, how much does the book cost online and hard copy? Maybe Kevina, tell us, mm -hmm. and then we'll get into today. Okay, so the, the book has been going for 1,000 shillings, Kenya shillings. Yeah, so it will depend on where you are and uh, the cost of getting it to you, but the cost of the book is 1,000. Okay, okay. Um, let's get into today's discussion though. What's the, let me start with you. What's the worst uh, hiring mistake you made? I know you've had a many, like your business is recruiting, half of the time you're recruiting. What's the worst mistake you've ever made? Uh, Maybe I should give one or two or three. Uh, for, for me to be recruiting under pressure, like I need someone and I need them in three days and it, it just doesn't work. It, the one thing you should not do in a big, big hurry is recruit. Take your time to recruit. It takes time to do a good recruitment is the one thing I would say. Maybe I can add one, maybe one or two more and, and agree with what everyone said. Hiring friends and family is difficult but mainly because it is very hard to tell them off. It's very hard to fire them. So you yeah. tolerate them. You keep them. <laughs> it is very, very, very difficult. Yeah. In fact, I, I say to people, if you're able to fire your brother and go to the next family meeting and face them, then hire them. Otherwise, if you can't, then just don't hire family. However, you also can't sit there and have your brothers and sisters struggling. So I, I still... Uh, see you then if there's policy and procedure somewhere you could uh, it's it's tricky in, in that way Kevina you're not helping us here you're telling us yes and no at the same time <laughs> yeah, so, so it's no but if you have the enough and you're strong enough to deal with a firing situation should it get there then you can do it I, I have okay. worked with two people who, who do it and you know, like you're really strong. You can fire your brother, like yes, and I feel nothing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So you have enough, yeah. Okay, okay. Now, now, one of the things you do uh, as, a, as an organization is you, in your bio, you say you work with SMEs from the point of recruiting up to the point of uh, firing or let's call it exiting, right? Mm -hmm. um, so tell me about, let's start with the first phase of like, I guess employee life cycle. How do you do recruitment? And we have quite a number of SMEs in the room. Some of us very advanced. Some of us in the beginning. Some of us in the middle. What have you seen as as uh, something that we need to look out for when it comes to recruiting? Okay. So your question was, what is the past the practice? Uh, how do we recruit? Um, many times our clients will call us and say, I need an accountant. And the question then would be, um, how does that need come about? To be because maybe uh, you had an accountant they have left or you have accounting needs you're struggling with your accounting uh, i'm just using the accounting example or you the accounting department has grown so you need more people that's where the, the need would begin and so when you call me and say get me an accountant the first question i would say i'd ask is first you need do you need that position uh, who else can do that job um, and then if we establish we really need the position as uh, do you have a profile or a job description for the job? That's the most important part because then I would need to understand the scope of the work. 
And uh, in, uh, in our own recruitment journey as recruiters, should you not have that, then we can sit with you and help you create a job description, but that's something that you would need. And ideally, if you're running a business, then you should, that's one tool that you want your, uh, to have because it guides your employees on the scope of the work. This is what your work is. Yeah, so um, once we have a job description, and a job description could be three pages long, but an ad is, uh, should be a, a one page, it should be one page long, a job, uh, th that ad that will go out there. And this is assuming that you are going to um, advertise for the job, which is nine out of 10 times. That's what to do. Nine out of 10 times we place an ad somewhere online. Mm -hmm. What would be the 10% the, the or the one out of 10? It should be maybe you have a database or you have people who worked for you in the past and you want to just, you know, call, call them and ask them, are you still available? Uh, could you come and consider working for us? Or you have interns who've been working with them. That's a very good system to have. Um, to have maybe interns who come and go. So you over time, you know the good ones and they might be available. But should you be going up there to do an ad, then you will convert your job description to an, an, ad, an, an ad, the job ad. And now do that. Uh, what you're aiming for here is a summary, just a summary of the job. And if you're struggling, you need to remember when you used to put ads in the newspaper and how uh, the, the cost would depend on, on, on the size. Takes, and then we, we, did, we didn't have much money. So we'd really summarize it for a small snippet. Yeah. Not, right, not, right, right now, people say, I'm struggling to summarize this. And like, if just think that, imagine you had to pay for this ad in the newspaper. How yeah, would you if summarize every, it? If, if every word cost you yes. so much. <laughs> yeah, without leaving out any important things, and without maybe uh, telling to, not using jargon that you would not understand because in our organization we use acronyms and words that are only known to us. So remember the audience that will be reading it, um, they, they don't know uh, your jargon, so don't use any jargon. And, and then just keep it to the most important bits of the business um, that are known out there generally to everyone. Um, and then now you are able to go and advertise. Then one thing I'd like to note also is a title. Sometimes internally we use job titles that are specific to us. So when you put on an ad with a title that people don't really understand, it limits the candidates who get to apply. And uh, unfortunately to say this is people read the job title a lot more than they read the actual facts or a list of duties in the job ad. We know that because of specific positions that we advertise for and the kind of people who apply. So there's this particular position in marketing called account manager. An account manager has nothing to do with accounting. But anytime we put out an account manager ad, we get half of the applications from accountants. But had those wow. accountants just read the responsibilities, they, they would not apply because it has nothing to do with accounts. <laughs> but that tells us that uh, people look at titles and they apply to the title because of the title. So, so be careful with the title that you use. Um, if it's a title that is known to you, uh, pick a title that is closer to the, what the market knows. You can always change it when someone um, joins. So that's something to think about. Another title change that we recommend um, is if it's a title that will, is likely to demand a lot of money and the budget that you have is small, change it as you put out the <laughs> ad so you get I the see. right candidate. When they come internally, you can always upgrade them. The one example I'll give is CEO and GM, general manager. Those are titles that just by the nature of the title demand a lot of money or people think, yes. CEO, half a million plus. GM, 400,000, 500,000. And your budget is 100,000. Don't put <laughs> CEO, <laughs> GM and CEO. <laughs> half of you, not even half, 90% of people who apply will be yeah. uh, overqualified and will ask for a lot of money. And your intention is to get as many people as possible with one tick, just one ad. So the more specific you are, the better it is for you, the easier it is for you to just get the right candidate of people. So the title is important. Make your ad short. People don't have time to read long uh, documents. And anyway, all you're doing is giving your competitor 
all your details about what you do. <laughs> so keep the ad, uh, the JD internal, and then make the ad uh, short and sweet, but capturing all the important things that you need. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, okay. And I know I've gone in and on. Uh, maybe you uh, can redirect me and see if I'm. No, no, in the that's, right. I think. I think it's uh, you kind of went into compensation, so I'm with you on that. So, so just let me take one step back. I'm getting too excited about this conversation. For everyone who is listening, I'm having a conversation with Kevin Nyambura, and she's helping us walk through what's the journey, what do we need to look out for when it comes to recruitment plus SMEs. So small, medium, a bit bigger. She's helping us walk through what do we need to look out for, especially around recruiting and hiring. Okay, so we've just gotten some tips, uh, very interesting ones. If you have a low budget, don't over, don't use titles that suggest otherwise, kind of be wise <laughs> in that. And then when the person comes into the office, we can have a further conversation. <laughs> I like that one. And then, and then focus on just keeping it simple and short and something that other people can understand. So what I'm hearing from you is, it needs to be, think like the person who is going to read this advert and not just you in the office, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, now my, my next question is about compensation and benefits. Are, are we are trying to hire, how do I navigate that? Okay, so there'll be obviously the discussion about the money, but even as at the point where you're putting out the job advertisement, you need to have thought through the budget and that would be a range. Let's say uh, you want to say, this position will be uh, between 35,000 to 50. So you have a, a certain range. Now we say ideally put the figure on the ad. Very rarely in Kenya do we put figures on the ad, but what you'll find that whenever you put a salary, it narrows down to very specific people. It reduces the hours you spend just looking through the hundreds and they are in the hundreds of applications that come through. So if you can put the figure, it just really limits and reduces a lot of the work that you do, but it's very rare that people put the salary, um, maybe because it's uh, it's too little, it's too small, and you don't want to be associated with that, or I don't know, for whatever reason, we don't, we, we shy from putting uh, salaries. So um, what your question is about, the, the budget, and then that's uh, not so much a recruitment question, but it's a, a, a benefits question. How do you pay your people? Um, then people keep thinking that uh, if you tell them that salaries are confidential, they will not discuss them. I can tell you for sure, for free, salaries are discussed. It's and discussed, okay. when they discuss the salaries, you want that they, they feel like it was fair. When you find two people, doing the exact same job who came at the same time. And then they find that they find out and they will that they earn different salaries, significantly different salaries. Then you have disgruntled, at least one, the one who earns less, you have a disgruntled person and you don't want to do that. So before you go into this hiring process, then think through your salaries and make sure that they are fair. And I'm not saying they need to be high, because we are always SMEs, we know cash flow is a big issue and getting your salaries right is a very important decision that you need to make. They just need to be fair, fairly compensated. And when they discover, and I'll repeat, they will, you want them to get to this <laughs> yeah, yeah, so at can... the point when you're going into hiring, then you have that salary uh, because you'll ask that question or they will ask. And if they don't ask, that's a candidate who's gone with a question and answered. Because everyone is there for, uh, at the end of the day, really, I want to know how much I'll be paid. So you want that discussion. Um, usually we ask that then, what is the salary expectation? Yep. And candidates really dislike it because in SME, you can't tell. In large organizations, yes. you can tell. SME, you can just never tell. And what they are usually most afraid about is you had a budget of 50, and when they asked for 30, you gave them 30. So this is a plea to everyone on this call. If your budget was 50, and give someone 50. asked for that, please don't give them that. Give them the 50, it was 50. <laughs> yeah, so oh, yeah. that's the biggest fear. And that's why they will lie. They will lie about their salary just, just in case it was 50, and then they ask for 30, and then you give them 30. But be fair in that way, that if you had standard salary to give, just give that, especially if there are others on that salary. They will quickly find out 
they will quickly be very disgruntled. Does the argument, uh, yes, it does. The, the argument I've had is it comes down to negotiation. So if Kevina knows how to negotiate better and she gets 60 and some negotiated 35, either of them should be able to live with their decision and the company saves. But you're telling us that's not very wise. It's not very wise. It's actually um, a very, it's not a good decision at all, I would say, because now you have a disgruntled employee. Now, what are you going to talk about that? They, they look at you as being unfair. And it is unfair. Why would you have two employees doing the same thing and earning and not, they're not earning the same salary? And keep it, telling them to keep it secret does not. They go for drinks or whatever they do and they tell each other salaries. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and you have a budget So you want to also just stay on the budget. It's very motivating for the staff to know we are, we are the same and we are fairly, plus whatever other compensations and benefits that they are. Okay. Um, so the question I want to ask then is, so you have, you have this job description, or did, I don't know if you wanted to add a bit on the job description, how important is it to, to have these clear job descriptions? And I've seen on your, on your LinkedIn, when you're posting uh, jobs, they are very, it's very, it's a one pager, but it seems to be really clear. But also I know that employees tend to face this where there's a clear job description until you start working there. Then all <laughs> of a sudden there's five pages. <laughs> How do we navigate okay. that? Okay, but to, to be fair to, to employers, the, the job ad was not the job description. It was just an ad right. and it was a summary right. of the description. So when they come on board, then you give them the job description and explain, we couldn't give, I mean, it, it was definitely not the full job description and this is what then the job description is. But you can have that discussion uh, before they join at the point of maybe negotiating. And then also it's not significantly different all the key points were there. It's just the, the 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 detail of it that was missing. So if I have, yes, only the details uh, that are missing, but any key deliverable, any key task needs to sit as part of the job ad. Like if maybe, yeah. I mean, let me use HR. If I have performance management, I would just say performance management, rewards and development, um, I would, uh, rewards management, then I would have training and development. But we think training and development, I could write two pages. Yeah, but the, those don't need to be there. So you need to be comprehensive in that way. Okay. No, the scenario I'm pointing at is when uh, you, you hire Kevin, uh, perhaps you give her this three page JD, but then a few months down the road, she finds herself in a situation where the work she's doing is not, is like 10 pages compared to. How do you, how do you deal with those issues from the employee side, especially? And how does how does that work? Okay, you find that a lot in small businesses, just by the nature yes. of the small business. So yes. being open with employees and saying things are likely to change a lot, uh, and and just being open about it, um, and also when they complain, to listen to them because sometimes they're really really overwhelmed and really swamped, and they work through the night and over the weekend, and that's not fair. That really is an indication that someone is handling more than one job. So as a business owner, and I recognize that it can be tricky, just knowing how much is enough for one person uh, is to work with your employees as you, um, as you go along uh, with your management, making sure that the job descriptions that you give, um, first there's, there's a disclaimer that you put in any other uh, task that's Any given, other duties are given by abuse. your supervisor. <laughs> sometimes we abuse that. We shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't put it there to abuse it. And I then know that line. So many different tasks. You know, this can be a one-off um, yeah. project going on. So go and help with the project. That's okay. But then if it's something that has become permanent, you want to review the job description. And if it is significant, then they will come and say, then this comes with a, uh, maybe a possible pay rise because it's a completely maybe new job. But right. there are changes that happen. So, um, and we're moving now a bit further than recruitment, but further down the line, after you recruited and the job has changed significantly, then redo the, redo the job description and reissue it. So that you capture that this is a new job. And these are the, this is the new scope for the job. And that happens. It happens in small businesses. Things move and they change a lot. and that flexibility is something that we should allow to happen. But it shouldn't be unfair that then we have three jobs in one that are so yeah. crammed and then 
someone cannot even live their own life. They have to work almost 24 hours. Well, yeah, it's interesting because the reason I bring it up is, is to ask, is there a, so there's the JD at the time of hiring and recruiting. And SMEs are in the world of evolution, things move quickly. But then as, as most, most of us here are employers in that specific reference, is there, how often do I need to double check that actually my people, you know, because the most difficult conversation to start is that one, especially for the employee, because, you know, you fear, sometimes there's a fear of like, I may be seen otherwise, but what's a healthy habit for us as good employees, employers? Okay, I say minimum one year. Like at the beginning of every year, it's good to pull out your job descriptions and see are they still relevant. However, if you have a good performance management system, then that means every so often, every three months, every four months, a manager and an employee sit down to discuss their job. And that's a good time to look at scope. And even in their uh, performance management is everything that you do from all the weekly meetings that you have, the departmental meetings, all that, you're able to. Uh, just discuss a topic that, or, or a task that does not sit maybe in the job description and it's discussed all the time and just allowing for employees to ask questions or raise comments and, uh, and, uh, and complaints when they need to complain and say, I'm no longer doing this. And I'm dealing with that right now. Yeah, and I know we are moving a bit from recruitment. We need to go back, but I'm dealing with that, uh, somewhere where um, an employee is unhappy because their colleague has been dropping balls and because there's a deadline that needs to be met, the work is thrown on them. They're like, no, I'm doing two people's jobs. And this person is very, very unhappy and allowing them to be unhappy and to complain. And they're not saying, okay, you're being disrespectful. Yeah, but this young man has come and said, this is not fair. You are allowing this guy to get away with yeah, he's slacking and I'm taking the weight. And I am taking up the responsibility. So I am hurting. Yeah. When I'm ready to go at five, then there's this work that wasn't done, then I can't go any but 10. And that's consistently every three days a week. Wow. Yeah, so I love it for that to happen. And it, it happens, um, but just to address it when it does happen. Okay. But at least the healthy habit you said, as employers, review that at least once a year. Um, it's interesting, the questions. So Judy uh, Kemo is asking, how often should employers review salaries for employees? Is that about the same one year line? I know we are towing away from recruitment, but we're going to come back. What do you have any thought around that? Um, for 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 small businesses, I will I wouldn't say it's start it's a casting stone. And um, once yeah. a year, it's good to think about it and see is it a good time to is are we are we able? But then the other are thing, in position there to are yeah. factors, yes, there are many factors to look at. Um, do you have the money? Have we made enough money to be able to review salaries? Uh, but also remember there's a cost of living. So something called the cost of living adjustment, uh, which should be maybe using the inf inflation rate as the figure that you use to increase salaries of maybe like 6% yeah. and say every year we'll take it up by 6%. Um, inflation. But however, it's not something that is in the law. So I go to places and they've not had salary reviews for five years. Um, sometimes they understand. They'll tell you, oh, yeah, but the business has been really, really struggling. So we understand. Sometimes they don't. They can say, look, the boss is just buying new vehicles every day. And <laughs> we are doing yeah, extremely yeah. well. And we have access to the figures. And, you know, they just don't care for us. So if you're doing well, please review salaries. Uh, maybe every uh, year will be a good time to stop and check. Are we able to? If you are, then do it. If yeah. And, and there are other, the other uh, Benefits, there's the end compensation, there's a bonus, uh, could be commissions. Um, if you maybe don't have a medical cover and that's maybe a better benefit that you want to give out, then get them onto a medical cover and just many other packs that you could give your employees. Okay. If you're able. Thank you. Yeah, if you're able. And I like that piece about if you're not able, communicate so everyone understands where we are. It doesn't yes. feel like we're holding out. Um, start. The second, I saw some research done by, I think it was RipperWorks, uh, it's a partner with AMI. They they found that the biggest challenge for, for SMEs in Africa is one, of course, finance. And then second, very close after is talent. Where do you find good talent? So, and, and that's a question. So what different recruitment methods do you use? What sources of potential candidates are available to us as small businesses? 
Okay, that's a very good question. And it's something that we deal with every day. Every day. I have people who follow me every day, please get me a job, uh, get my niece, my nephew a job. And there's a lot of unemployment in Kenya. But on the other end, now for us employers, it's unbelievable how hard it is to find good talent. Good talent, it's, yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, there's a disconnect. Something is a problem here. Yeah. Can someone do something about it? <laughs> and we have this very educated nation and population. Yeah. So the question is, is our education system churning out the skills that we need? And I think that's where mainly we have a problem. An education system that is too theoretical. And for you at work, you want the, the work done. So it's more yeah. of the practical than all this knowledge that people have acquired that is not translating to practical. So we have a we have a problem. We have a big problem. So uh, and that's why I said at the beginning, my biggest problem uh, or mistake in hiring is hiring quickly. Because then if I'm looking for a needle in a haystack, then that will take a while. So I need to be right. uh, give it time um, and then also be very uh, creative about how you find people. So and someone I think said one of the questions or one of the comments over relying on the face to face interview. Yes, yeah, yes. It's, it's not a good thing. It's not very effective. Remember, there are those people who are who have a career to write jo uh, CVs and yes. to <laughs> coach people for interviews. For interviews. <laughs> so, an inter so a candidate comes and first their CV is fantastic. Yeah. And then they come, first they're already, already very eloquent and they have been right. coached. They will completely... Um, amaze you and, and, and you'll very quickly give them the job. And it only takes <laughs> two weeks to wonder, but where is a person? We can <laughs> Who is yeah. this person? Who is this imposter? <laughs> it's not a person. Yeah. Can... yeah. So then how do you then protect yourself from that? Yeah. Um, and also and... knowing, I guess if I may add to the weight of the question, also knowing, like you said, you can't just wake up and fire the person. <laughs> Oh, yes. And now that's the other problem. People call me and say, now this person you hired, we hired, we don't want them, we want them gone. Like you're stuck with them for a moment. You, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know yeah, so then uh, the question to ask ourselves is then, what is the other way to do it? And we're not saying don't do the face-to-face, -face. we're saying just do more, do more. And one of the things you could do is now um, look at the job that you are filling, now the position that you're filling, what are the requirements of this? So for example, um, it requires for you to write reports. It requires for you to write, do a lot of writing. Then you want to test that because as I speak with you, you don't know whether I can write or not. And if I had that discussion just this week when the client was saying, but they can speak English, they can write. And like, it, doesn't, it does not translate. Not the same thing. <laughs> Does not translate writing. Yes, uh, and um, and writing has attention to detail. There's where is the comma? Where is this? What you were talking grammar, about? Grammar, all these, yeah. The grammar, yeah. It's amazing how it does not translate. So for you to avoid knowing about that two months down the line, why don't you do it during the interview or the recruitment process? So give right. them something to write. Give them something to write, um, so that you they can write in prose and you can see whether they know how to write. And they're going to use a certain level of maybe Excel or their computer. You want to see whether you want to test that skill. Test the, the, use test, of word, test the skill. Test the okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I can continue. Uh, yeah. You want to test some of these skills that may look obvious, but are not. And I'm, I'm talking think. about just the, the simplest thing, like attention to detail and giving a certain test. Because you can give a test that measures writing skills, attention to detail analytical mind and just ability to research because you want all those in that job. So you can give them an assignment and you can even find a way that if it's possible that they join you for a full day or a couple of days. And that one is really, really works. You tell them, come what, what? for a month, for a week. No, a month you will not get because unless yeah. you are not employed. <laughs> if you are not employed, yeah, yes, no, There's no time. I don't have time to be there yeah. for a month. But but what, what, what are you hoping to see? What are you watching for? So you, I'm just taking a step back in case we're moving too fast. So we want to hire and you're saying, bring those people in, schedule each of them to be in and let them spend the day there. Mm -hmm. what, and what should we be looking for while we interact with this person? Okay, fine. So at the beginning, as you were doing your job description, it had the 
duties and, re and, and responsibilities, but it also has what we call the specifications. You want someone who can, as I said, uh, write. You, you want maybe someone with a degree. That one is easy. You'll just bring your paper, uh, the certificate. That's easy. Yeah. But then the others, you, if you want someone who can speak very well, you can test that as they speak with you, that you can test. Yeah. However, there are things that you just can't pick at an interview. So those are the ones that you'll be maybe checking later. Ability to interact with other people. Um, maybe being a team player to a certain extent, that takes a while to pick, mm. but also are they comfortable? Maybe they're going to be going out there to sell and they'll be doing a lot of networking. So how did they interact with the team? Did I sit in my corner and not talk to anyone the whole day? Uh, and I'm supposed to be going out there to talk to people and talk to strangers. Then that's going to be already a red flag by itself. You, as I said, writing skills, you want to check that. You want to give them an assignment and just see how creative they are. Maybe there's a yeah. brainstorm and say, just to join the brainstorm, we'd like to hear your ideas. And you're there watching. And, but it's, it's a simulation or an actual brainstorm that was happening that day. So they come in and you're able to see how creative this person is, how analytical the person is how they write, how they communicate, how they talk to other people, maybe even just how they look, how they dress, because it's important for the job. It's not always important, by the way. And the other people will challenge you and say, why are you telling us to wear suits? No one ever true. sees us. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, yes, I work yeah. from home and I send the work. You know, why yeah. is this important? <laughs> yeah, so there are things that you're able to, uh, to test. The things you can't test within a day, so there are times when you say, okay, we need you for a week. And it could be the actual work that you want them to go out there and sell. And maybe it's an item that is sellable within a day and you want to see whether they're able to sell or at least create a pipeline or do a, enough to for you to know this person is able to do this job. Yeah. If I can give an example, maybe of HR, uh, what I'd do if I had someone for a day is get them to write um, maybe some templates, some letters, maybe not send them out, but I'd say um, this, this situation, how would you respond to this? A client yeah. has asked for a termination letter, just draft for me a termination letter and what it will look like. A client has, a, has presented a disciplinary issue, advise the client. And I'd want uh, to see how they advise like the Like a role, role modeling. Their, yes, yes, their knowledge of the employment uh, process and regulations. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I do. And so that's uh, an addition to what we said. You, you can do a face-to-face, uh, but it's actually the most common, but the most not effective. It needs to yeah, be we, you need to add a couple of other things. And, and also the panel is likely to be biased. And if that happens, there is bias. Yeah. yeah, the panel could be biased in that way. The panel sometimes is just you because you're a small business and who is the other person? Or you and one other manager. And the person in front of you reminds you of your brother, the one you really love. And we call that halo effect. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Or, so they, or they remind you of yourself. You dislike, or someone you oh. dislike. And, yeah, it could be even that. That's called now the phone effect. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you find that then there are many other biases that affect that interview process. So there are things you want to do. And sometimes you want to interview them on another day, a separate day. And I'm surprised often when that happens. I'm like, but this person made sense yesterday and today what's going on? They, what they're saying is not making any sense. <laughs> today, the, yeah. today they were not coached. Yeah, today they were not ready. They did not come with their script. Okay. Yeah, so, so, all this, so all these factors into why it needs to be like put time in between your, the need for hire, don't just hire because you have a pressure project, right? Because yes. you can't do all this under the gun. There's no way. You can, you can do that. And there's a lot of thought that needs to go into it. So as I said earlier, do not hire under pressure. Do not allow yourself okay. to. But also then it means that you need to run your business in such a way that gaps don't cramp, uh, cripple you. Because if someone just leaves and you're completely crippled, you have no option. You must hire. Very quickly. But if you have okay. what we call doubles, that is someone else in the organization who knows this job, they're able to come in and fill in the gap as you hire. And, and the other maybe idea that we haven't discussed is if you have an, a good internship system going, then you have a flow or an inflow of people who come in as interns and then move to trainees, just preparing for a chance that would come. Have a cycle. Yeah, and you have a cycle and you have um, a pipeline of people, potential people. And as they go through their internship and trainee, uh, maybe a training management system uh, or process, 
you're training them on the right skills. You're training them on how to write reports, how to prepare tenders, how to do proposals, how to do a concept note, your way, how to write a proper email. So these are people are well, these are people are very well prepared when you that need wow. comes. Yeah. And it usually doesn't yeah. cost you too much. Uh, interns, please pay your interns, but they don't need to be paid too much. Yeah. Sometimes you don't pay interns, it's not fair. Okay. <laughs> Especially okay. if they're doing real work. Like that's real work that yes. you would have paid someone else to do. Yeah. Kevin, let me jump in and ask a question that's that I've, I've in my work with lots of uh, SMEs, something that I keep hearing every time we talk about talent. I keep training, they keep leaving. Mm. I keep training, they keep do I what do I do with that? Because it also affects my recruitment process. Give me a quick answer and then I'll we, we shall end with uh, your favorite subject of the day, legal issues, legal considerations related to hiring. But okay. for now. Uh, maybe just before, uh, I want to let you know, everyone who is watching and listening, please, I've seen a few questions in the chat. We'll keep going for just the next three minutes, and then I'll, I'll we'll, we'll do a quick fire of some of the questions that you put in the chat. But for now, Kevin, uh, I keep hiring, they keep leaving, I have to keep recruiting. What's happening here? What do I do? Okay. okay. So as you recruit, sometimes you recruit people who have potential, but don't have the skill. So then for that, you must then have a training. You must have a training. Uh, program or you must be ready to train because if you get people who are well qualified they'll come expensive if you don't have the budget then what you do is get people who are not skilled and then upskill them now if you keep upskilling people and then they keep living um, and I, I hear this every time and the question is if you stop training and they stay and now they're not skilled it's now you have another problem <laughs> you know, you have all these people who stay with you and then they're not uh, trained. So that's a question. And it's, it's a quote that uh, some famous person said, that what if I train and they leave? But what if I don't train and they stay? Okay. Yeah. So you that must train. train. Yes, training is a, is a cost you put in your budget and, and, and make peace with. Make peace with the budget for training. And train people. Part of, it's, it's, a, it's a give and take. People come and work for you, but by the time they leave, they have gained then one of the things you give back to them is skills and knowledge and abilities, which you call competences, that they didn't come up with, that they live with. And you upgrade their life and able to you know, move up the ladder. It's about me, I am very happy when that happens. And I don't look at it as a, an expense and it doesn't need to be expensive. We don't always have to get external trainers to come and train you. Can, you have a lot of information and knowledge. Get creative with that. Yes, be creative with it. Create time when people learn. Let them learn from each other. Just make it intentional. And then there's a lot of content online, a lot. And in fact, now with chat GPT, oh my gosh, there's just, there's no excuse anymore. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, good. Um, let's talk about legal considerations um, related to hiring, employee contracts, discrimination, equal opportunity. Some of us are familiar with these subjects, others, we're just trying to run our business, but we need to pay attention to this. Help us, where do we start? Okay, just key things, with to, as key things to know. Okay, uh, first, one of the things to just remember is that we might not have as much litigation in Kenya as in the West, but I'll tell you in, in America, recruitment has so much litigation that you can't ask people um, about their marital status, you can't ask them their age, you can't ask them their age, yeah, you can't even ask their them gender. Yeah, generally, you can ask them any of those. So we are still not there yet. However, um, it's just that no one has come to maybe sue you, but then it exists in the law. There are things you can't ask. You can't ask someone if, um, like where they come from or, or what tribe are you? Those are not good questions to ask in an interview. They, they can be considered discriminatory, that uh, you discriminated me because I was female or no, not the right gender, because I've had either single or married, married depending on circumstances. Someone will ask, so how old are you? Um, are you married? Uh, are you going to get married soon? Uh, will you have a baby very soon? Like, Babies, oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that's a big one, yeah. yeah. How many children do you have? How old is your child? Because they're like, oh, soon they're all now going to get another child. Yeah, they're going to get another one, yeah. And, and I keep telling people, uh, if you hire well, the women are very, very, very hardworking. They make up for that three months. If you hired, okay, if they're already lazy, then you hired badly. It didn't help. But they are <laughs> yeah. not so much about that. 
uh, just yeah. put it in the budget, forget about it. Um, unless now there are too many and three of them, five of them are gone and you only had six employees. So now that can be a, a bit of a problem. But then you need to remember um, to stick to what you are looking for in the job and a lot of biases and uh, but we have to try and eliminate them and especially don't ask those direct questions at the interview. I know there are ways to tell how old someone is from how they look when they left school and those can estimate. Uh, but then asking them the their academic things, papers, I guess. Yeah, and especially the tribal um, angle. Yeah, don't ask such questions, but also don't have that practice. If all your people are from one tribe, then you might as well just right. operate in that language. And then you limit yourself. You limit yourself significantly. Yeah. So don't um, do um, don't don't have such practices that would render you discriminatory. Um, then you had asked about uh, maybe compensation. So there's minimum wage. Let's start there. Um, like in Nairobi, the minimum wage is 16,000 16, and, and something. And sometimes we uh, forget that. And we have all these people who earn. Uh, and, and I've gotten my clients who have said, no, I'm going to pay 12 and I don't care. And I'm like, but that's right. not the minimum wage. Minimum wage is this. And uh, we need to be careful about that. But beyond that, beyond like maybe... 20,000, 30,000 is like no law uh, in terms of salaries. But then what I talked about earlier, it needs to be fair because you, you can also be sued for unfair discrimination in terms of salary. We have seen that. People have said, this person was earning this, I was earning this. And it's because they are a certain tribe or they are a certain color. And then I was being discriminated. So you could have uh, all that. Then the newest would be the Data Protection Act. Remember yeah. um, that as you recruit, then you get access to a lot of personal information. You need to be careful about that. As I said, you could be challenged for what you use the information for. And one of the nuances, but maybe it's not taken effect yet, is are you uh, is the you the background checks? So do you tell the candidate that you're going to call your referees? Uh, yes, I wanted to ask about you reference could. checks. Yes. You should, you should, according to the, the new uh, Data Protection Act, because then- it's, So then it, just to be clear, just to be clear, it's not assumed that you're going to reach out to these references. So you find that uh, more and more now, people are not having, are not including their referrals. They'll say uh, available upon request. Oh. So if they avail them upon request, then they are giving you uh, the- the uh, implied implied permission to call permission to then call them, but you also need to tell them uh, according to the law. Many of us are still not doing this thing, but what we are saying is that it's what the law has said, and they can't they can't claim that you used the information to maybe uh, for other purposes, but not just that, but even the employee's documentation because you'll have to keep that documentation, so you need to just use documentation for the right purposes. They use information the information within the documentation for the right purposes. Yeah, so that's where I would say that some legal um, issues that you need to take care of within the process of recruitment. Very good, thank you so much, Kevin. Let me run through some quick questions. If you have a quick question you want to ask, please put it in the chat or in the q and I'll start with Naomi's question. She says, how do I attract? Now this one, Kevin, I'm going to, to try to get a one, two line answer from you so we can see how many we can cover. Naomi is asking, how do I attract good talent with a small budget? What other non-financial incentives can I, can I offer? Okay, I hope we've answered a lot already in the answer uh, that we have yes. given. That give, being, being in a space where you, are, you have structure, where there's good leadership, where there's good communication, where employees are learning, where they have non-monetary uh, perks like recognizing employees and you know not telling them off in public. Tell call them to a private meeting private, in yeah. an office if you're going to tell them off. All these practices really go along. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, someone is asking how much is the book, Pauline? I think you said it's one thousand, but it's not yet available in print. It's going to probably be reprinted soon or something. Please confirm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, there's uh, someone in the chat. Super excited. My name is Kevina, and the and the facilitator is called Kevina. So there's some excitement happening. Hi, Kevina. 
Um, Kathleen was asking, you mentioned something on contracts for casual workers or unskilled aid. Like, how do you manage that? Okay, all right. That's a good question. So, casual workers are described as workers who are on a day's wage. So, they're supposed to be paid at the end of the day. And the contract can also be terminated by the end of the day. And the law gives a limit to how long you can have casual workers, and that's three months. So beyond three months, if you still continue to keep them, they can automatically be considered permanent or fixed, fixed term employees. So um, you need to have the just minimal details. I keep asking, if this person falls here and is unwell, whom are you going to call in terms of family? So get the details, the personal details you want to have, because you need to still pay the statutory payments for casuals, you still pay pay as you earn NSSF, NHIF for casuals. So you want to get those details, unless maybe they work, only work for two days. But if they work for a full month, then you're expected to deduct all that. NSSF, NHIF, pay as you earn, and any other deductions that there might be. Uh, so you need to have those details sitting in their, in, in their files. And you have, so the contract then would have that. That is a day's wage, but maybe sometimes paid at the end of the week just for planning purposes. I'm going to try to move faster. Humphrey is asking, I may, if I may, uh, he's saying, is it fair to blame an employee for a task that is not clearly stated in the job description? How do you handle that from guests, both perspectives, employee and employer? Quick one. Yes, uh, so that's a very tricky one. So sometimes you could argue that it was not in my job description, but if you can any pull out any other, if you can pull out any other instruction, like you give them an email, you send them an email and said, uh, please go and do this and the other, then that was a direct instruction that they did not follow. So try and document your instructions to employees. They help. So you can, yes. The but if you're the employee, because I know some of us here uh, have like full-time employment, but we are doing a side hustle with business, how do you approach that if you're the employee and you feel like you're being given tasks that are not in your JD? So that's something, as I said earlier, address it to your supervisor if it's a lot. If it's just a one-day task that you're given, then it, it looks very bad to employer if you keep saying no to tasks that, uh, and anyway, who else was supposed to do it? If just maybe there are like three of you, it looks very bad. But we say if it's consistent and it's, you know, you can say that for the last three months, I've not been able to leave at all. I've not been as, as I was supposed to in my contract, then you can raise that issue and have a discussion around that. But we can also, uh, so as an employer, you need to know what to do. You then change the work hours, but then you can only change within the 52 limit. So if they had only 45, you can change up to maybe 52. But then some jobs also are not time bound, like management. Yeah, work management task. is work bound. Yeah. So if I give you a bigger yeah. task, uh, then you can't say the smaller, smaller task that is not in your job. Okay. Bosir is asking, um, I think commenting on something you said, uh, people should have the same salary if they're doing the same work. Um, he's bringing the aspect of how about if one has more experience, maybe 10 years, or they've been here 10 years before and things like that. How does that factor in? Yes, that's a very good one. Because even when the employees see the salary difference, then the explanation for that is that this person has been here longer. But within but, the same yes. band. So uh, we, there's two of us, the three of us who earn, who do the same job. Uh, and it's anyway, uh, automatic that this one who's been here longer is probably doing the job faster, better. Uh, but it's obvious that if they've been here longer, there's been salary increments over the period of time, so they are likely to be unhappy. And even these employees are unlikely to be unhappy when they discover. It's when they came together and they know each other. Okay, but what I'm hearing you say is even that should be open communication. Should it be something that's under the rug? Not, not really. We're not saying uh, broadcast the, the salaries, but I'm saying I mean, that uh, there be a yeah. question it needs to be one that we can justify. We need to be able to justify. It needs to be obviously justifiable. Okay. Obviously justifiable is safe. Don't, don't keep things hidden. Oh, yes? It, it, yes. But if you can, it's very rare that I find salaries broadcasted. It's very, very, very rare that I find okay. that. So I would not still insist that you do it, but I'm just saying, should it be found out, then they need to say, okay, fair. It should be, it should be obvious that your experience here factors into how much you get without necessarily saying. Yes. It's kind of okay. obvious. I don't think I've seen anywhere where I've been challenged and you can see that person has been there for a long time. Okay. 
Very good. Kevina, it's been such a joy hosting you. And I want to say thank you so much for giving us your morning into afternoon. It's, uh, I know it's been uh, quite insightful and I see lots of people saying lots of thank yous and someone is already asking for, Kevina, your fellow Kevina is asking for the training paper. Kevina, we're going to let you know how you can access this recording because we are recording at the end of this uh, web, uh, this webinar. But Kevin, I want to say thank you, Miss uh, Mrs. Nyambura. Please, a round of applause. And if people want to reach you, I believe these are the contacts that we have. Or are they the ones on the screen? Just yes, confirm yes. for me. Um, I think I'll give a different one for the. Yeah, I, I think it's okay. Yeah, I have I have two. So the the telephone number, but that one is still fine. You'll find me on okay. that as well. Okay, good, good. Uh, we want to make sure it's not your private line, otherwise we'll be calling you and like you are fully employed because we may have emergencies to deal with. <laughs> so we'll keep it as the office line. Okay, thank you so much, Kevina. I will allow you to drop off now. And if you want to keep in touch with Kevina, you can find her on LinkedIn as well and all these other different platforms. There's also YouTube and every now and then she's giving uh, talks. And I know that even a few months back, you're giving a talk on on I think a few weeks back on on um, quality in the workplace and things like that. So that's it's been amazing to see what you're up to. And thank you for spending the morning with us. Okay, thank you very much. And you have seen my email address. You can shoot me an email if you want some consulting and be able to discuss that. All right, thank very you, Sam. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Please a round of applause. The heart emojis, all these wonderful things. Please put them up. Put them up. Put them up. Make sure that our guest feels appreciated. And of course, I'm sure everyone is wondering, how do we get this recording? We have a portal, we have a link that we will be sharing at the end of this session where you can just click and lead yourself to the link. You don't need to wait for an email. So we've made it much easier. All right. At this point, I'd like to uh, go ahead and turn, turn it over to uh, uh, our COP section. And I'd like to invite, oh, there you are. Just a second, please. Mm -hmm. Edna, I am Edna, you're with us. Would you be handling the uh, corporate internet banking solution? Yes, Sam. Very good. I'm handing over to you now. All right, thank you. Um, good afternoon once more. Uh, I am very, very appreciative for the session that, that we've had uh, to our hosts and, and also to our guests. Now, um, Kevina spoke vastly about uh, managing recruitment and the hiring process and getting the right people to work for us. Uh, what we found uh, important to plug in to this conversation as CoBank is once you have your, your staff, once you've hired your staff, how do we support that in, in, uh, in uh, terms of remuneration? How we support you in giving you a system that will be able to pay salaries and that's what uh, my Part of this conversation is is on our corporate internet banking solution, which is a very robust solution. Uh, we offer to uh, to our businesses, our corporates, our SMEs. It gives them capabilities to do various payments, including salary payments. So I'll be I'll try and just cover everything um, and be concise. Uh, number one, our corporate internet banking solution. Uh, when it comes to the system itself, the accessibility and security. And the security and support that it offers. This is a web-based application that means that uh, also it has 24-hour access. So you do not have to narrow yourself into operating the system uh, only on working hours or on weekdays. You're able to access it around the clock. You're able to do transactions around the clock. Uh, it's a very versatile, very, uh, uh, it's uh, had the multi-browser Compat uh, compatibility. So whatever browser you have, as long as you have good internet, you're able to access the service. Also, it's a very, very safe system. We've given various the access for you to be granted access here. There are very many, we have made uh, it such that only the right user is able to get in by some people a three-factor authentication, where you have to have your user ID, you have to have your password. We send the one-time uh, password upon every login. So it's very, very secure. We know that the transaction of the internet can be, it makes um, 
your account vulnerable to fraudsters and to attack and to uh, hackers and, and the like. So you've done a very good job in making sure that the system is very safe for use. Uh, we also send the one-time passwords via the phone and the email. So if you're even out of the country or you're not able to access your mobile, you'll get that through the phone. Uh, the system also inquire, requires you to have your security questions where you select questions that only you might have answers to. Hence, it's a very, very secure system. You can trust our business, your business with, uh, you can trust that your funds will be safe with that system. Uh, also, it allows multiple users to have different levels of access. As SMEs, you might want to delegate a task. Um, someone else can, you might want to delegate someone else to have access to the system to maybe uh, just be furnishing with statements or to upload salaries. Uh, that that person would only have the much access that you're comfortable with. They are able to you know load salaries and everything and just leave it to you to authorize and and pass the payment through. So it just secures you. You able at the point of onboarding, you uh, tell the bank who you want to assist you in running it. If you see the need for that, that is, it's not a month. If you need assistance, if you need someone else to to do that uh, data entry. We, it allows for that and gives you give gives that person limited access as much as as you wish. Also, uh, it's important to know that we have a dedicated customer service support. When you're uploading your salaries or any other payments, and if you run into any hiccups, we have a dedicated team that are there to support you to ensure that your payments go through seamlessly. Uh, if anything, might in case of any issue that might crop up or will do that be able to also to, to just uh, very quickly uh, make amends of the situation. Now, what are the capabilities of the system? Number one, for the under account services, you're able to get your detailed uh, summary of the accounts, all the accounts that you're on, on board. You're able to get a very detailed summary of the accounts. Uh, you're able to generate statements from the comfort of your premises, of your home, of your workplace, of all the loans that, or rather, of all the accounts that you're on board on the system. So it makes it, even interaction with, uh, with the bank, is minimal. We give you the capacity to access your account and view the balances. To do your reconciliations, it also gives uh, system audit trails. Whatever you do on the system, whatever your staff will do, uh, if you give them access to it, is very easy for you to track. Uh, now, uh, on the payment solutions that uh, the internet banking um, solution has, we've talked a lot about uh, recruitment. So now this staff need to be paid. So what does the system do? Our internet banking platform allows for payroll processing. You're capable of uploading bulk uh, bulk files where you enlist your payroll. You, you have your payroll that's ready and you're able to upload that and pay. You can pay either to bank, be it co bank if your staff is employed, uh, is uh, operates a co-bank account. If they operate another bank uh, domestically, you can still send the money and do processing to those accounts in other banks, and even in PESA. So maybe you have your, your bank, maybe you have even casuals that you're paying. Uh, they might not have accounts, they may not want to use their accounts. It might be preferable for them to receive money via in PESA. And we've made it very possible for you to do that, to upload even a file or a single payment via in PESA. Uh, the payments can be made by either internal funds transfer, that's what is IFT, as per the presentation, or electronic funds transfer, those are the payments we make to other banks within uh, the country. RTGS is also uh, transfers to other banks, especially huge volumes uh, or rather huge amounts of transactions of a million is supported by the system. And also there's PesaLink, we know about PesaLink which is a very, very efficient, very fast way to send money through to other banks. It's an instant payment as good as in person. Uh, internally, when you're doing transfers to your staff and the bank with Cobb Bank, it's, you're able to validate that payment. Uh, it checks, the system checks whether that account number really belongs to the staff that you pay. So it's very easy for you to validate. It makes it very, very seamless for you to do that payment. It uh, allows you also, as a business owner, to select who is going. It's flex flexible in terms of it will allow you to choose who's going to bear the cost of the transfer. Once you're doing a salary processing, you're able to either bear the cost or pass it on to the staff. So that is your that's a management decision. You get to tell whether you get to choose who's going to 
bear the cost of any transfer that you do for the salaries. Additionally, the statutory payments, like Kevina said, statutory payments are mandatory by law. Uh, you must pay our KRA, we have must pay our NHIF. We've uh, integrated our COP internet banking with the KRA and NHIF systems. So uh, payments are validated and they're instant. All we require from you is the e-slip number, which you get either from the KRA or the, the originator being KRA or NHIF. With that um, e-slip, you feed it in the system, it pulls automatically pulls the amount that is due and you pay. And in that way, we are helping you comply with the law, make such repayments, make them in a timely manner. Uh, we know that these payments have deadlines. There are penalties that come with paying uh, payments, such repayments um, for me, whether it's domestic, whether it's a pay as you earn, whether it's custom, whichever payments, the VATs and all the like, the payments you're doing, such repayments are have their deadlines. So we save you the headache of having to rush to the branch at the time that, as is true to our Kenyan culture, we are last minute as by nature. So worry not, you're able to do that and meet your deadlines in a timely manner. Um, also, another advantage of using our internet banking platform, the salaries that are if you process if you if you process salaries through the corporate internet banking especially when you're sending them to the account we give the customer or rather your staff the capability to borrow from the bank be it salary advances or personal loans so as SMEs, um i really encourage us to to separate you know our operations from now dealing with every other emergency that your staff has you find that your staff whenever maybe they have something going on at home maybe they have uh, you know, a, a sick child or they have an emergency and they have to come and start borrowing advances from you. And it can also be very uh, destabilizing for you because it's not necessarily that you might have the funds that they need at that time. The staff is asking for 10,000 and you've just, you know, made a payment, a huge payment of you importing something or you bought stock. And then someone here is this a very reliable staff of yours that you don't want to disappoint comes and tells you I need 10,000 shillings right now, I've been called my mom is sick, or you know there's some sort of emergency or I need school fees or something like that. My child has been, has been chased away from school. And it's really, really destabilizes yeah. you. If you have one, two, three, four, five staff and three of them borrow your advances within a week, then you know that, that can really, really um, get in the way of your operation. So when you pay your staff through our internet banking platform, paying them into their accounts. They get, we, we get as a bank to whitelist them and uh, give them advances. So if a staff comes to you, you'll just tell them, apply for the loan and the loans are available from your mobile. Uh, for the staff, you get uh, salary advances by the mobile and you get the personal loans from the branch. So it makes it very, we just deal for you, just deal with the business development, just deal with, uh, you know, growing your business and managing your staff. Let's not task ourselves with, handling every emergency, personal emergencies that the staff might might have. But overall, um, the system is a very, very, very good system. I would encourage you to uh, visit our branches. If you don't, if you're not enlisted or if you have and you don't use it to the full capacity, I would encourage you to visit our branches and get more advice. I'd expect maybe we'd have a few questions on the same. I think we have maybe a minute or two on that. Sam, we are, we are, we are doing badly on time today. I believe we should yes, be winding true. up. Yeah, but uh, basically, that's that's what I had for you guys today. The last time I was, uh, there was feedback that I was very fast. I've, I've tried to to tame <laughs> to, to tame the speed of my speech. Huh? So my delivery is better this time. But uh, you yes, way Thank you. way way better. Yes, uh, let me yes. jump straight into. Catherine was asking, how much do you charge salary payments? Uh, salary payments are, it depends, if you're paying to accounts, it's 100 bob and 20 bob excise duty, so that's 120 shillings, which again, as I said, you can, you can bear the cost or transfer it to the beneficiary. Okay. Yeah. okay. You can also um, share it 50-50. Yeah. There's oh, provision so it's for that. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Um, let me just double check if there's any other. If you have any question about uh, what Edna just presented in terms of uh, this payment option uh, in terms of online, um, please let us know. Let me just check if you have a question. If you don't, then that's absolutely fine. Okay. Edna, is there any other 
Okay, there's uh, there's someone who's already clapping. So I guess Edna, this was brilliant. Last time you were moving very like supersonic. Now yes. it was very. <laughs> this was very good. Uh, we we definitely appreciate. Okay. Thank you. And and if if I need so if I'm an entrepreneur here and I need where can I find this information? Do I is it on the website? Is there a link I can yes. go to? Yes, it's on the yes, website about the product that we offer. Yes. Okay, very good. So if you, you need, also visit uh, also, yeah. sorry, go ahead. I'm saying you can also visit any of our branches for further information. We also have uh, the number that uh, maybe I can share is here. The number for our yeah. car service support. Let me share it here, share it here, so that you can uh, reach, out, reach out to us in case of anything. Would it? Is it so one of the ones on the screen right now? Uh, no, that's a contact center number. This. Oh yes, actually, oh, no, no, no. It's a different number. Okay. I'm sharing it right. So, now. yes, please go ahead and do that. And while we do that, we want to. Maybe I'll kind of revert to you so that you give us your call to action. I think you mentioned a bit about visiting our branch and, and what else can we look out for? Uh, wait, Sam, there's a question yes. from Humphrey. He says that competitor has an option of getting details of a single transaction, e.g. RTGS or EFT. We have a challenge with this. Uh, Sam, uh, this is, it's possible for you to get uh, the single transaction details. It's possible. I think I'll have to take that offline with you. I don't know, some guide on how we can do that. How I can um, address Humphrey, Humphrey specifically. Humphrey, if you can just put your contact in the in the chat and just address it to hosts and panelists. Um, Edna will be sure to, to reach out to you or at least someone will be able to reach out to you on how we can resolve that. Right. All right. All right, thank you. Very good. Edna, um, so we need to visit our branches for more information. And uh, I, I know you mentioned about leveraging our digital solutions to manage these payments and all that you presented to us. So we thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you for Very good. Me. You're welcome. So thank you for being here, everyone. It's, uh, it's just over time. So if you want to reach out to us, Again, there's numbers on your screen in terms of uh, reaching out to COP if you need some assistance at all, or if you'd like to reach you ask via email, you can do that. There's also a WhatsApp number that's on the screen. If you also want to reach out to us regarding these sessions, uh, Fiona Maina is doing a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure these sessions work and provide the, the value that you're looking for every Thursday. So please reach out to us. Um, but that's, the, that's all we had time for today. But before you leave, I promise that there will be a, a link in the chat. Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Edna, just confirm that you've received Patrick's number in the in the chat. Yes, I have Humphrey and Patrick. I'll, I'll reach out to both of them. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. All right. So um, I'm just going to request uh, Fiona, if you could kindly put the link to the portal. Um, if you're looking for this recording and a few others which we have gone through all the sessions we've had, you can just click on the link. It will take you directly to the webinars and you can select to rewatch this and many, 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 many others. Thank you so much. So that's all we had time for today. We will be dropping off. Allow me to say the prayer and then we will close. All right. Father, we thank you so much for this time that we've had. We thank you for this session. We thank you for every business that is represented here. We thank you for Kevina, who was our guest, we thank you for all the wealth of knowledge and insight that she brought in. And we pray for every business here that, Lord, you may help us to thrive, help us to pick up more skills, pick up more knowledge, and apply it so that we may see the fruits in our businesses. We pray that you may give us a good rest of the week and bless our uh, ventures everywhere that we go, as our families as well. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone typed, Amen. Go ahead and type amen and we thank you so much so we will be seeing you but if you're here if i if i may indulge you in one other thing before you drop off now that we've said the prayer i've launched a poll please give me 30 seconds of your time and just give us some feedback on how today's session went so just 30